Hi. I've been trying to explain this idea to a lot of people. Um, the idea about this idea about how we make intellectual property and the internet and being an author and publishing and all of that work. We have an idea, uh, Jordan and I. And I've been trying to explain it. So instead of trying to explain it to everyone, I want to make this video, right? And so I've collected together some uh, some paper and uh, and um, a pencil, and I'm going to try to tell you a story that explains the idea. So um, please forgive me if I take a moment here and there to. Uh, you know, slow down and draw because I'm trying to draw this real time for you because I don't know, I think that'll just be more interesting to watch, you know what I mean? Anyway, so here's the story. It's called The Idea by the Dryer Bothers. A long, long time ago, I mean a real long time ago, before iPads or iPods or anything else, uh, probably before you even remember, there was 1980. In 1980, if you were an author, you had a serious problem. Because if you're an author, what you want to do is make make it so everybody can read your book. The thing is, in 1980, there was really no way for everyone to read your book. In fact, once you wrote your book on a typewriter, um, the you only had one. You only had the one book, which is a serious problem if you want everybody to read it. So what you had to do in 1980, if you were an author, is go to a publisher. You would be like, hi, I'm an author. I've got a bunch of money. Or sorry, I've got a bunch of uh, ideas and a book. And then the publisher would be like, well, that's cool because I have a ton of money. Right? And a ton of money in 1980 is what you needed. Because in 1980, in order for everybody to read your book, you had to have a factory that would be able to produce books and uh, people to distribute the books. And then you need to put the books onto trucks. And from there, the trucks were pretty landlocked. Nobody in Germany could read American books if they were German. So from the trucks, you would put the books onto boats, and from the boats you would put the books onto planes. And then finally, you'd have books in a bookstore. And at the bookstore, customers would have to pay money for buying the books, right? And books, I kid you not, could be worth as or cost as much as $20. Books could cost as much as twenty dollars back in 1980. This is how you write twenty, by the way, in the United States. But remember, um, I'm gonna hold off on that. Remember that books cost twenty dollars because you had to pay the person who sold the book, you had to pay the person who flew the plane, you had to pay the person who drove the boat, you had to pay the person who drove the books, you had to pay the person who carried the books, and you had to pay the company for making the books, and then finally you had to pay the publishing company for orchestrating all of this magnificent work that publication companies did, you had to pay the publication company who finally paid the author, who only got a couple of cents per book sold. That's how it used to work in 1980. Let's fast forward a little bit. Something very important happened a few years later. Um, this important thing has revolutionized all kinds of how all kinds of things work. In 1982, the human race invented the internet. What the internet did was it allowed different people in entirely different parts of the world to exchange information instantly and for almost free. Yay! I have information! Really? Over here on the other side of the world? That's awesome. Yay, people sharing information. Unfortunately, well, I don't know about unfortunately. Fortunately, really. It turns out that books are just information. That means all of a sudden, people can exchange that information for almost no cost to themselves. We've decided to call that piracy. Yay. I'm a pirate. Arr. I'm sharing stuff with this guy over here. Arr. Apparently the American guy has 
a chair and a table while the <laughs> African guy doesn't. That was not intentional. Um, anyway, yeah, we've decided to call that piracy. Now, piracy is kind of cool in that we can freely exchange information via piracy, but piracy has some problems. The problems that piracy has are that if you have piracy, then what happens to the publisher, right? Well, it turns out that the publisher doesn't like this whole thing very much because all of a sudden the publisher has a whole bunch of books, a whole bunch of books, and less money because people can just trade his stuff for free, right? Which is messed up. So the pu publisher, I mean, for the publisher, the publisher gets really angry, right? The publisher does not like this at all. And the publisher has been doing all kinds of things since. The publisher tried to do crazy things like pass new laws that would change what it was to own a book, right? They pass, try to pass crazy laws like SOPA and protect IP. Um, uh, these laws are basically designed to make it so that people can no longer freely exchange information, whatever information they want, so that the publisher can stay in control of the situation and stay in control of the money. Arr, oh, arr, right? And stomp all the pirates out. The publisher wants to win. Well, it turns out that <laughs> that's not going to work so very well for the publisher because as it so happens, people very much like to have free stuff. Right? People like free stuff. It turns out that if a pirate is somebody who shares free information on the internet, everyone's a pirate. Now that's a problem for publishers. Now let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to the year 2012. 2012. In 2012, if you're an author and you have an idea for a book, and you want to share it with the entire world, you have an entirely different problem. Sharing a book with the entire world is very, very easy. You just put it under the Creative Commons copyright, which means that anybody can use it at any time for free and exchange it for free. Right? You just put it under the Creative Commons copyright, and then everybody, all the little pirates, look at all the little pirates, can download your book for free and they all love it and you're happy because everybody gets to read your book. The problem with using the Creative Commons license and just letting pirates uh, exchange pirates are people who exchange free information. Uh, we'll from now on just call them people. Uh, people who exchange free information, uh, a la, or, mm, in other words your book, the problem with letting them do that is that as the author you, you, you need uh, a place to sleep, you need food, and if you're very, very, very lucky, you also uh, maybe want a car, right? Um, these are impossible if everybody's just freely giving away everything you've ever made, right? This is like a serious problem. So um, uh, that's where we're at right now. Now what Jordan and I are suggesting is that the author team up with a place like Kickstarter. Now, what Kickstarter does is it allows people to donate to creative projects. Uh, we, we, we really feel like um, the Creative Commons license plus Kickstarter is uh, the future, right? Um, because, uh, look, if, here's, here's what we're suggesting. We want to give everybody our book. We want to make sure that everybody can have our book for free. Um, the unfortunate thing is that we need to eat and sleep and hopefully, if we're very, very lucky, have a car. So what we do is we go to Kickstarter and we say, world, give us money. And then the world thinks about it. And then all the little pirates each give us a little bit of money each, hopefully. Uh, and if they do that, then we can give the world uh, the book for free. And then we're back to uh, um, this sort of situation, right? Yay! Have our book for free. And then the rest of the world has the book for free, right? And everybody wins. So Creative Commons license plus Kickstarter solves this entire problem, which leaves us with one nagging question. Whatever happened to the publication company? To that guy with a bunch of money? Well... If you don't care, then we don't either. Thanks for watching. 
and please uh, sign on to the little red bird check us out make us a friend you know what I mean like add us to your uh, wall or whatever and uh, yeah thanks